Hey folks, we are going to talk about the motives for imperialism today. Your goal for the screencast is you should, when you are done watching this, say I can define imperialism and explain the five motives for imperialism. As you watch this screencast, um, you should be filling out page four. Uh, don't forget to do the back side of it after you finish watching the screencast. So, having said all of that, um, if you can complete page four and explain the five motives for imperialism and also give a definition of it when you're done, you're in good shape. If not, go back to the beginning and rewatch part of it. So, the first thing we need uh, is a definition of imperialism. Uh, for this unit, imperialism is going to mean the takeover of a country, um, and we're talking about African and Asian countries in this unit by a stronger country. And so, in this unit, we'll study European countries taking over African or Asian countries. Um, now that we've got that definition out of the way, we need to figure out why European countries did this. And to do this, we've got a convenient acronym, EMPIRE, um, which is a large group of territories or countries under a single government. Um, and the word EMPIRE will give us a way to remember all five of the motives for European imperialism. And the E will stand for exploratory. The M is just a, a placeholder. It's to remind us that these are the motives we're talking about. The P stands for political reasons. The I for ideological motives. The R for religious motives. And finally, the E for economic motives. So what do each one of these things mean? Let's look at that right now. Exploratory motives are kind of self-explanatory. Uh, Europeans wanted to discover new lands, so one of the reasons that they imperialized other countries was just to kind of check them out and see what they were there. Or excuse me, check them out and see what was there. Next up we have political motives. European countries believed that the more countries that they controlled, the more powerful they were and the more powerful they would be seen by other countries. European, the leaders of European countries, remember, were in big competition with each other and before the Berlin Conference, and they believe that if they did not take over other countries, then some other country in Europe would. Why not make it be them? And here we have a political cartoon of England with the arms of an octopus, and England, the arms of the English octopus are reaching into all of the lands that England was able to imperialize. Ideological reasons are, in a word, just racist. Um, the Europeans felt they were better than other people. Uh, they, had, they believed that they had a right and a duty to bring their culture and their technology to countries that they viewed to be lesser than themselves. We mentioned this as being social Darwinism before in the, Europe, or in the Berlin Conference screencast. There were also religious motives for imperialism. Um, the religious motives were very similar to the ideological motives. An aspect of those ideological motives were the in the, that European belief of their superiority was their superior religion. And Europeans wanted to convert people to Christianity to help save their souls and to help civilize these foreign peoples from around the world. Also, economic motives. Uh, hopefully that big old diamond helps you see that. Um, Europeans wanted to become rich, and the minerals and the labor and the crops in countries they could imperialize would help them do that. So, hopefully, you can define imperialism and you can explain the five motives for imperialism. If you can, great, you're in good shape. If not, uh, head back, rewatch parts of the screencast. Thank you.